Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange, and the host who might be a wronged woman. Uh, welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found while dancing on graves and various cemeteries. That, that sounds bad, but uh, um, it, it, there's a reason I said it, it that as it relates to what I'm talking about today. It is Poetry Thursday, a day for me to talk about all the lovely poetry that I've encountered in my travels. Today I wanted to talk about a particularly venomous poem uh, about uh, feeling that you were wronged by an ex-lover uh, and wishing... Uh, terrible things upon them and uh, you know celebrating in their defeat. Uh, I will be talking about Dancing on the Grave of a Son of a Bitch, a wonderful title, by Diane Wakosi. Um, I haven't heard of Diane Wakosi before, but for those that don't know, Diane Wakosi was a, or is, uh, a beat poet confessionalist. My favorite schools of poetry, um, uh, for their personal nature. Uh, she's written countless poems since the 60s, uh, and she's talked about, uh, everything ranging from, you know, uh, ex-lovers to women to, um, uh, Em uh, the Emerald City of all things. Uh, she writes a lot about a, a lot about mythology and what some people have called the mythic self, whatever that means. I'm not really well versed in in, in, in uh, those ideas, but uh, she uh, she writes about women. Uh, she's very um, uh, direct in her poetry, uh, not really not really holding any punches. Uh, and I found one of her poems today and like I hadn't really heard of her before then, but I think again, like I'm I'm probably gonna check more of her work out just because uh it, it, it left such an impact with me. It was it was such a joy to read this poem. Um, another interesting thing about Diane Rakosi is that uh in the eighties she kind of um uh ridiculed the new formalism new formalism poetry movement as she called it a branch of reaganism uh and so what new formalism is is uh the idea of poetry that it needs to return to its roots um uh, it needs to adhere to the the proper forms of poetry uh in order to be taken seriously as as right other writers and other medium uh are are, are taken seriously in, in the modern day uh, and while I will say that there is is some need for structure, uh, I it's weird that new new formulas sought out to say like those those weird Marxists over there with their with their um, uh, un unstructured uh, beat poetry that uh, doesn't really adhere to any any of the traditional forms like they were saying that was you know wrong or something like that. And so it does seem like a very conservative message of uh, of poetry, uh, and thankfully it hasn't really like taken hold um, in favor of slam poetry or or whatever poet uh, poets come forward. I think I'm gonna have to do an, uh, another video on new formalism because the more I learn about it, the more it seems like a weird response to. Uh, um, the the changing times of the 70s and 80s and how you know some people weren't weren't quite ready for that. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's talk about the poem at hand today. Uh, um, I'll do um, I'll read the poem uh, and then I will do um, a little analysis and we'll move on from there. Dancing on the Grave of a Son of a Bitch by Diane Wakosi. For my motorcycle betrayer, God damn it. At last I am going to dance on your grave, old man. You stepped on my shadow once too often. You've been unfaithful to me with other women, women so cheap and insipid it psychs me out to think I might ever be put in the same category with them. You left me alone so often that I might as well have been a homesteader in Alaska these past years, and you left me, thrown me out of your life often enough that I might as well be a newspaper, discarded differently each day. Now you're gone for good and I don't know why, but your leaving made me miserable as an earthworm with no earth. But now I've crawled out of the ground where you stomped me, and I gradually stand taller and taller each day. I have learned to sing new songs, and as I sing, I'm going to dance on your grave because you are dead, dead dead. Under the earth with the rest of the shit. I'm going to plant deadly nightshade on your grassy mound and make sure a hemlock tree starts growing there. 
Hensbane is too good for you. But I'll let it grow a bit there for good measure because we want to dance. We want to sing. We want to throw this old man to the wolves. But they are too beautiful for him, singing in harmony with each other. So some white wolves and I will sing on your grave, old man, and dance for the joy of your death. Is this an angry statement? No, it is a statement of joy. Will the sun shine again? Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm going to dance, dance, dance. Duncan's measure and Pinder's tune, Lorca's cadence and Creeley's hum, Stephen's sirens and William's little Morris dance. Oh, the poets will call the tune, and I will dance, dance, dance. On your grave, 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 because you're a son of a bitch. A son of a bitch. And you try to do me in, but you can't, can't, can't. You are a liar in a way that only I know. You ride a broken motorcycle. You speak a dead language. You are a bad plumber, and you write with an inkless pen. You were mean to me, and I've survived. God damn you. At last I am going to dance on your grave, old man. I'm going to learn every traditional dance, every measure, and dance, dance, dance on your grave one step for every time you've done me wrong. So that was Dancing on the Grave of a Son of a Bitch by Diane Wakosi. Uh, a fascinating poem and very intense because you really get the, get the venom and the hurt and the betrayal that, that the... Um, the narrator feels uh, towards the to her motorcycle betrayer uh, um, who who cheated on her and also left her uh, left her with 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 nothing really. Uh, in the intro to the poem, uh, there's a foreword where. Um, where Rakowski describes this as a as a dance poem, and then she goes on to describe how this was about a a man and a woman who uh, who for some reason separated, uh, and the woman wasn't particularly hurt by the separation. It was the more the fact that when she asked for her things back, the man was reluctant to give it to her, and then uh, he he decided to take those things for himself and said, "Oh, uh, this amounts to all the rent you owed me uh, for the past years of our relationship." And uh, the woman is particularly hurt by that because he's equating their relationship to rent, and it it, it feels wrong, and it, it kind of is wrong in my opinion. It, like no no relationship should be equated to, to money unless it's a you know uh, prostitutorial uh, interaction there, uh, which is fine. Sex work is not wrong. Uh, so you know she feels a bunch of anger, and it it spills out into this poem. Uh, um, something that uh, that interests me about this poem is is the is that there's still a feeling of love uh, of loss that that she doesn't have this anymore and it hurts but there's it's 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 kind of being replaced with rage over time uh, an interesting li uh, set of lines that um, make uh, that display that is now you're gone for good and I don't know why but your leaving actually made me as miserable as an earthworm with no earth but now I've crawled out of the ground where you stomped me and gra I gradually stand taller and taller each day. Uh, so you, you get there like like she's she's with she's like an earthworm with no earth. So she's um, she feels out of place and things don't really match up. Like that, that's how breakups are, especially when you've been with someone for so long. Like no matter why you broke up, it still feels kind of unusual and, and wrong. Um, and uh, like even though she feels so much hate towards him, like she can't help but feel sadness that that, that relationship has ended. Um, so there is there is some sadness there, and I, um, it's a very um, uh, emotional kind of emotional um, in terms of sadness moment uh, in an otherwise very angry poem. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with like how she wants to sing with the wolves on his gra grave or uh, um, uh, grow poison on his grave, uh, which are, are both like very extreme things to do to essentially desecrate the grave. Um, uh, I like the way she calls him out too. She says, you were a liar in a way that only I know. You ride a broken motorcycle. You speak a dead language. You are a bad plumber and you write with an inkless pen which are very extreme uh, you know accusations and, and very harsh uh, if you're if you're in the know like how, telling someone they speak a dead language like oh the language you speak it doesn't even have any value you uh, my father rode motorcycles and he was he prided himself on on keeping his uh, motorcycle like uh, in prime condition and not letting it fall apart so anybody who rides a broken motorcycle 
it um, doesn't really take care of, of the stuff they they, they claim to care, care about. Uh, so, you know, she's really getting at the fact that he, he's kind of a poser in a lot of ways. Um, he's a bad plumber and you write with an inkless pen, which sounds like a great insult. Like he, he pretends to, to write, you know, great, great works of art, but you know, ultimately he has no ink in that pen. So he's writing nothing. He's, he's pretending, you know, a great poser. Uh, he's a liar, um, is what she's saying here. And it's a, it's a fascinating, like, sort of venom that, that she feels towards him. And she's getting it all out. Uh, and hopefully a, a catharsis moment for her so that, uh, like, this, this rage doesn't continue to build up inside her. Um, and that, that's essentially what dancing on the grave of your enemy is. It's, it's a cathartic moment. You're celebrating their defeat. Uh, and hopefully the narrator is able to find, um, get themselves to a better place where they're not feeling this, uh, this, um, in, these intense emotions anymore. And they can channel it to maybe finding new love. Oh, so that was Dancing on the Grave of a Son of a Bitch by Diane Wachowski, a, uh, a really good poem. I definitely recommend that you go out and, and read it. I will put a link in the description to it so that you can uh, you can find it and you can read it because it's it's an interesting um, poem and the words are arranged in such a way that it's it's supposed to come off as a dance poem. Uh, maybe you're playing the drums while you're while you're reading it. So it's a uh, it's definitely one of the more more different poems that I've that I've talked about on this uh, on this channel. Uh, so yeah, absolutely go read it if you can, and uh, leave a comment below if you read the poem before, or if you want to say something about my review. I would love to hear from you and have a discussion about this interesting poem. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can get Poetry Thursday out to the masses. Uh, follow me on Twitter so that we can talk more about poetry and other interesting and funny things um, at uh, Around the Weird. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck in your weird travels as you dance on the grave of your enemies. Farewell.